Hi, I'm Stuart and I'm a project engineer here at Shore Distribution UK and today we're just going to be discussing the topic of feedback. Every audio system has a maximum amount of gain or volume that can be applied before you start to induce feedback. Feedback occurs when a signal that's coming from your loudspeakers arrives at a microphone both in phase and at a suitable level that it's picked up and looped through the system again to be amplified and then played back through the system. At this point, maybe one or possibly even more frequencies will start to ring or howl and you'll get a terrible noise that I'm sure you've all experienced before. When designing an audio system for a conference room, in order to achieve good quality audio without feedback, we need to balance the needed acoustic gain versus the potential acoustic gain that our system can provide. As you move further away from a sound source, the amount of direct sound that you hear decreases and you start to hear more of the reverberant field. The potential acoustic gain that you can achieve from a sound system can be influenced by the acoustics of the room itself, the directionality of your microphones, the positioning of those microphones, and also the amplification level within the room. When we're designing our systems, we want to ensure that those closest to the sound source hear at the same level as those furthest away. And this helps maximize our intelligibility by ensuring that everybody is hearing more of the direct sound versus reverberant sound. The amount of gain we require in order to achieve this even coverage is known as our needed acoustic gain. However, each sound system has a maximum potential acoustic gain that can be achieved. When it comes to tackling feedback, if you're working on a brand new design, then the mathematics behind needed acoustic gain and potential acoustic gain can be extremely valuable. However, if you're trying to optimize an existing system, there's a few best practices that you can follow that'll help you guys out. Move the microphone closer to the desired sound source. Poor microphone technique increases the amount of gain required in order to capture that sound well, and the more gain that's needed, the closer you are to inducing feedback. Move the loudspeakers closer to the audience. Distributed ceiling loudspeakers can ensure even coverage, or you could use delayed surface mount loudspeakers to provide suitable level to those seated further away. Reduce the number of open microphones. Every time you double the number of open microphones, you reduce the amount of potential gain available by 3 dB. You also introduce unwanted noise into the system and you create additional paths for potential feedback loops to occur. Use directional microphones where possible. Omnidirectional microphones are designed to capture sound from all directions, whereas the directionality offered by cardioid or supercardioid capsules helps minimize any unwanted noise from entering your system and also helps maximize the amount of gain available to you. Consider using signal processing to ring out the room. So dedicated signal processors sometimes have built-in feedback reduction where you can induce feedback and they will put in notches in the equalization to reduce those frequencies or you can do it manually through a parametric EQ and reduce those frequencies yourself. Lastly, consider acoustic treatment within the room. Each room will have certain frequencies which are more resonant than others, as well as maybe hard surfaces such as glass or hardwood tables that contribute to that reverberant field. If you can use absorption to reduce the amount of reverberant field in that room, you're allowing more direct sound to reach your audience and therefore requiring less gain to ensure good intelligibility.